This week on the keyframe, Bloop Animation turns three. Welcome to the keyframe, more here from bloopanimation.com. Here are the latest news from the animation and visual effects industry. Before we get started, I should mention that we just passed our three year anniversary for Bloop Animation. Actually, I kind of missed it without noticing since the actual date is June 6th, but I thought it was worth mentioning anyway. I usually don't really spend much time thinking about these kind of milestones, but this year I thought I should at least mention it. And I wrote a little post on the website telling a little bit of the story behind our studio, as well as reveal some fun stats, so check it out at bloopanimation.com. In addition to that, we had a couple of interesting new articles on the site. I recommend you check them out. The first one is a guest article by Rusty Gray detailing five ways to make your animation demo reel stand out. This is a huge article with a ton of actual demo reel examples to learn from, with specific takeaways from each one to use on your own reel. If you're a recent grad or just trying to refine your reel, check it out. The second article is a quick gear guide I put together with all the equipment we use to produce these shows on YouTube. What camera we use, microphone, etc. And now let's get to the news. Leica Studios went all out with the production of Kubo and the Two Strings, creating the most ambitious stop motion film of all times, using giant mechanical puppets and gorgeous detailed environments. And the film itself was also loved by critics, standing on a 96 approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. So it came as quite a surprise that the movie was Leica's weakest launch to date, opening with only $12.6 million. That reflects the general trend Leica has experienced since their first film, Coraline, which was their most successful one, with each film making less than the previous one. It seems like despite getting better and better with stop motion technology and making really great films, Leica is having trouble finding an audience for those films. This could be because Leica focuses on characters that are not necessarily cute like most Disney and Pixar's characters, and because of that they appeal to kids a lot less but they are also not too adult to attract the more mature audience. It could also be because stop motion might be less appealing to people than fully fledged 3D and attracts more of a niche crowd. Leica is really doing amazing things and I can only hope that they will find a way to sustain themselves with their next projects. On the other side of the spectrum, Sausage Party had a great launch with $34.3 million opening weekend, which is great for a film with a budget of around $19 million. This is great news for animation lovers who aren't kids, because that might signal a new era of adult-aimed animated films. So far, the animation industry has always avoided the R rating, thinking it wasn't commercially viable for animation. And I'm glad someone finally proved them wrong. The not so nice side of this story came from an unexpected direction. In the comment section of an interview with Sausage Party directors Greg Tienman and Conard Vernon, where an outburst of accusation came from several anonymous animators talking about the working conditions under their leadership. Many claims about not being credited saying that half the animators who worked on the film were not credited and the way the animators were forced to work overtime with no additional pay, under threats of being fired or blacklisted. Here are some of the comments. The production costs were kept low because Greg would demand people work overtime for free. If you wouldn't work late for free, your work would be assigned to someone who would stay late or come in on the weekend. Some artists were even threatened with termination for not staying late to hit the deadline. Almost half the animation team was not credited. The team believed in the film and poured their hearts and soul into it. Despite this, more than half of it was not credited. You can see the full team on IMDb, which contains 83 people, and I'm certain there are some missing. The film's credits, however, contains 47. I worked as an animator in Naturegen Studios on Sausage Party. All of my shots are in the trailer and I didn't get the screen credit. It was a really stressful atmosphere over there. Most of the core team who shaped the animation style and the character's body language didn't get the screen credit. Honestly, this is a phenomenon that we hear about a lot in the movie industry. We had that big visual effects outlash a few years ago after the studio behind Life of Pi went bankrupt. And then there was the whole controversy around the secret deal between studio heads to keep the visual artist's salary low. I'm happy there's room for people to come out with these kind of stories and that these comments got a lot of attention. This is the only way we'll be able to bring these unfortunate stories to a minimum. All right, guys, that's all for today. Thanks for watching The Keyframe. New episodes come out every week, so stay tuned. 
If you want to get into the animation industry too, we have some great courses for you at bloopanimation.com for some of the most popular animation software out there. The courses will take you step by step through the entire animation process from start to finish, ending up with a complete animated shot. So check them out.